Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Vanessa Rolf uh, to the stage now. She's a, a PhD student who's been studying at Monash University in the School of Psychology. Uh, she's getting towards the um, completion of this PhD and she's really interested in uh, human factors and predicting dog ownership behaviours, ones that we might agree are responsible and others that perhaps we wish owners wouldn't engage in. Please join me in welcoming Vanessa. I don't have a PhD in um, IT, as you can tell. <laughs> All right. So what we're looking at, again, is, I guess, the flip side of the coin. Um, basically, no matter how well, I guess, you breed a dog, what we also need to look at is trying to educate owners on management behaviours. So... <laughs> this is what we, we want to look well looked after and cared for dogs. We all love dogs, that's why we're here. So as you know, as you, we've all talked about today, there are a lot of benefits to owning dogs. Australians have own, probably have the highest rate of dog ownership um, in the Western world. So it's really important that we also acknowledge that there are disadvantages to dog ownership. And part of this is because there are so many dogs in Australia. And some of these problems are roaming dogs, for example. Uh, roaming dogs can cause car accidents. Um, we also have barking dogs and we also have problems with dog bites. Even though, as Pauline was saying, they're very minimal, we do need to acknowledge those. And there are a number of behaviours that can hopefully prevent some of these problems. Now, these aren't all of them, uh, granted. These are just the ones that I've looked at um, in this study. I have looked at another series of um, behaviours, including exercise and most importantly, uh, feeding behaviour. Because as we've said before, obesity is a big problem with owned pet dogs. So some of these behaviours are confinement. So confinement's going to reduce the number of roaming dogs. We're looking at permanent identification through registration and microchipping. Now, if dogs do become lost, then those kinds of behaviours will help the dog to be reunited with its owner. Desexing is suggested as a means to prevent uh, overpopulation and to prevent, I guess, unplanned pregnancies. We also have obedience training which is, and socialisation. So they're associated with, with better behaved dogs. At the moment, a lot of these management behaviours are regulated by local government. So, for example, registration is regulated by local government and they impose fines for those that haven't got a registered dog. So, a lot of the other regulations are really just incentives. So, for example, desexing is used, um, reduced registration fees are offered to people with desex dogs. But a lot of these uh, regulations really just rely on voluntary compliance. Fortunately, a study in 2006, an Australian uh, representative study, found that the majority of owners are actually quite compliant with these behaviours. So that's really good news. The majority of owners are compliant and they are good owners. But there are a minority and that don't comply with these behaviours and we don't know why. There's not a lot of research in this area. So the aim of this particular study was to determine First, the rates of compliance, and second, to identify the factors predicting compliance with dog management behaviours. The likely factors we looked at were demographics, such as dog age, the number of dogs in a household, but most importantly, what we wanted to look at were the kinds of beliefs people held towards specific behaviours, and what that relationship had towards whether they were going to perform that behaviour or not. We also looked at a number of dog owner relationship variables. So there were three of these. The first one was the extent that the owner felt bonded towards their dog. The second was how often they shared activities with their dog, how often they interacted. 
So if that could include things like taking the dog in the car with them or having the dog sitting with them on the couch, relaxing or watching telly. The third one was the extent that they perceived costs associated with their dog. So this questionnaire was placed on the internet. We got 1,016 Australian dog owners throughout all of Australia. All states were represented. However, the majority were from Victoria, but we did have quite a few from New South Wales, all the way from Queensland and, and Northern Territory and Western Australia. So we developed the survey based on um, opinions of experts and a literature review, and we posted it online for about two months. I then used a fancy technique called logistic regression analysis, and I'm not going to go into that. But suffice to say, the most the, all you need to know is that what we do is put a whole heap of variables in, and we find out what the most important variable is in predicting a certain behaviour. So what I'll do now is go through the results of each behaviour, and then I'll make some generalisations, some summary at the end. So what I found was that the majority of people say that they always confine their dog. When we looked at all these factors, we found that only one factor predicted confinement. So the more that people agreed that it should be mandated by law, the more likely they were to confine their dog. When we move on to registration, we find that 90.4% reported that they had registered their dog. When we looked at the factors, we find that four factors predict registration. So people um, that had more than one dog were actually less likely to register. And also people that thought registration was expensive were also less likely to register. And so we think that these two might, might kind of relate to each other. So the more dogs you have, obviously the more expensive it is to register. We also had people that thought that registration was a difficult process were less likely to register their dog. And what I thought was really interesting was that registration was more likely if people perceived support from friends and family. So much like I guess um, with say our drink driving ads and so on, how we use peer pressure and we use the influence of, of norms. These kinds of behaviours seem to be influenced by normative pressure, which I think is really interesting. And this will come up a few times as we go through each behaviour. When we look at microchipping, we actually have a whole heap of variables that predict microchipping. And we have about 86.5% that report their dog was microchipped. As you would expect, there is a difference between the states here because um, with New South Wales made compulsory microchipping much earlier than Victoria did. Victoria did in uh, 2005 and I think New South Wales was 99? 96. Cheers, thanks. So you'll find that there's a state difference. So people from Victoria had higher rates of microchipping than people from Queensland, but people from New South Wales had higher rates of microchipping than people from Victoria. So I think this shows that making compuls microchipping compulsory seems to have a beneficial effect, if that's what we want to look at for the other states. We found that younger dogs were more likely to be microchipped, so the older dogs were the ones that were less likely to be chipped. Um, and interestingly, if people actually perceive that there are certain costs associated with owning a dog, such as sometimes it can be a big responsibility, um, it showed that they were more likely to microchip their dog. And I think this is probably because they're a bit more, these kinds of people might be a little bit more aware of the responsibilities of owning a dog. We also found that the level of thought before acquiring their dog was related to microchipping behaviour. So the longer they spent planning for and reading about dogs before they got one, the more likely they were going to microchip. We also found that microchipping, if the people believe that it was difficult or expensive, they were less likely to microchip their dog. And once again, the influence of friends and family in this whole, the normative pressure was also related to microchipping. So if people thought their friends and family would approve of that, they were more likely to chip their dog. 